Hi, Purple Ella here. Today I'm going to talk to you about something deeply personal. This is something that's been happening in our lives for quite some time now, but it's taken me until now to feel like I wanted to talk more publicly about this situation. But I feel like we're in a place now as a family where we're strong and we're settled with this news and so now it's time for me to talk to you guys about what's going on here in the Purple House because I'm always transparent about our lives and also because I feel like sharing my thoughts and my feelings on this situation might be helpful for some of you guys out there who might find yourselves in a similar situation or who might find yourselves knowing someone in a similar situation and knowing best how to support them or support yourselves might be useful. So I'm going to bite the bullet and I'm going to talk to you about it. Before I start, I'm an autistic disabled content creator and I make content for our communities every week. So if you're not already, please consider subscribing to my channel to support the work that I do. Right, let's get into this. Also to add, I have spoken to my daughter who this primarily concerns about making this video. She supports me to make this video and she read the scripting and what I plan to talk to you about before I started filming and has approved everything that I'm about to share. I have a transgender daughter. She is 13. She's also autistic. This is our story. So my daughter, known here on the channel as Superkid, was diagnosed with autism when she was eight. She came out as transgender when she was 11. Now she's 13 and she's living entirely as her true self. So I know one of the first things that many people wonder about when they think about transgender children is, when did they start feeling this way? What led to them coming to the conclusion that they are transgender? And I spoke to my daughter about this when I was researching this video and also previously in the past when we've spoken to counsellors and other people that have been involved in her care so far and she identifies feeling wrong in her gender identity from a very young age, particularly age six when she was in year one of primary school. She recalls feeling like she was supposed to be with the girls, like when they went into PE groups and they would separate off the boys and the girls, she felt internally, intrinsically, whatever word you might choose, that she should be in the girls group. I guess she felt that she was a girl, but she knew logically at that time that her presentation was a boy. So she just kind of thought, I guess, well, I'm a boy, I guess it feels really uncomfortable, but I just have to get on with it. And then she recalls sometime around that young age, her dad using the word transgender. I guess they'd seen a transgender person on TV or in the media and her dad had explained that this person was transgender and had briefly explained what that meant. And she recalls feeling enlightened hearing this word and wanting to know much more about it. But she didn't feel able to ask. So time went on. She was diagnosed with autism. She was supported with her autism. And, you know, as far as we knew, she was a typical nine-year-old boy. And whilst I use the word typically developing boy, I guess for me, because I've never particularly gendered activities or clothes or expressions, for me, typically developing boy literally just means she was a boy and she was typically developing as an autistic child. During that time, there were activities and choices of style that could have been described as being girly. But for me as a parent, I never wanted to gender anything to do with my children. I never gendered colours, I never gendered toys, I never gendered activities. Uh, she had what you would consider typically boys toys alongside what you would consider typically girls toys and they were never presented to her as such. Activity wise, she was given the option to take part in any activities that she want to, wanted to. So she chose the activities that she chose and we didn't really think anything of it because I've never really considered stuff to be gendered. So she did ballet classes from the age of six. She still does them now. She has always had a favorite color of pink and it's still her favorite color now. She used to choose really ornate, pretty jewelry right from a very young age. Um, quite often I would walk past the playground when she was in primary school, when they were having their time that they were allowed to do whatever they wanted. It's called golden time, I believe. 
and all the boys would be playing football or roughhousing and she would be with a group of girls doing French skipping or some kind of clapping game but I never thought anything other than look at my child having fun because I never gendered those activities. I was proud of her for being happy and comfortable doing what she was happy and comfortable doing and wearing what she was happy and comfortable wearing. So I don't really consider that those were clues to her identity because I'm sure there are plenty of boys who enjoy those activities. But now, looking back with the knowledge that we've got, I suppose you could say that you can see that her tastes were what we might consider more typically feminine through her childhood, not in every aspect of her life, and it's not in every aspect of her life now either. So, how did we get to where we are now? The coming out story is probably quite an unusual one. When she was 11, she had just started at secondary school, I ended up watching a Louis Theroux documentary about transgender children and there was a child in this documentary that really reminded me of Superkid. Not that I thought the Superkid was transgender, that thought had never crossed my mind, but that this child had a quality, a way of being, that really reminded me of Superkid. And I happened to talk to Superkid about this situation and how this child had reminded me of them. And her reaction was really interesting. She was, there was something, it's really hard to explain. There was something in the way that she reacted to me saying this to her that made me start to think, is there something I need to have a conversation with her about? Because I always want to support my children in, in whoever they are and whatever they are. So a couple of weeks later, I said to her, are you having some gender identity issues? And she said, yes, mum, I am. And I'd really like to talk to you about it. So we went on a walk, just the two of us, and she said to me, Mom, I feel like a girl. This is quite a shocking thing to hear as a parent, I'm not going to lie, it's not something I expected, it's not something you can plan for or prepare for, or there's no kind of like roadmap map to my child just came out as transgender. I knew that transgender children were quite a controversial thing in the media at that time and the approach to supporting a transgender child was quite a controversial thing and all I could do was be her mum and love her and support her in her feelings. She had obviously given this a lot of thought from the way that she was talking to me on this walk. She knew what she wanted to do with this information. She knew that she wanted to change her name. She knew that she wanted to start presenting as a girl. She was very, very, very clear from the outset what this meant to her and what she wanted to do about it, which I guess made things more straightforward to us because I know that some transgender children can be a little bit more questioning and chopping and changing between different identities as they explore that. But for us, Superkid has and is still very consistently clear in what this means for her, that she wanted to grow her hair, that she wanted to get her ears pierced, that she wanted to present as a girl and that she wanted to change her name and that she had in fact already chosen a female name, which I'm not gonna share with you here because as you know, I don't use my children's real names online anyway, but she had chosen a name and we all really liked the name. So I'm kind of jumping ahead there. At this point, only I knew. And it felt like carrying this, it felt like being on the edge of a roller coaster, that bit where you get to the top of a roller coaster and you're about to go and you're not sure what's gonna happen and you're not sure what this means and you're not sure whether you're gonna like it but you're not sure whether you're not gonna like it. It felt very much like that. And I knew that what we needed to do was talk to Mr. Purple about it. So about a week after she had shared this news with me, we spoke to Mr. Purple about how Superkid was feeling. And I supported her to do that. And initially his reaction was what you would typically expect from a parent who was no way expecting, at least I'd had a little bit of warning that this might be what was coming. He was obviously in no way expecting it. And we weren't educated at that time. We weren't educated that gender is different to sexuality. We weren't educated in the language used around that. We weren't educated in this area. So his first reaction was to wonder whether she might be gay or, you know, the things that you typically wonder. But this reaction was very, very short. He was clear that he was going to support her. And within about a week, he had educated himself on transgender issues and we were both together as a team. So there we were, together as a team, ready to support our child, but unsure about the rest, best way to do that. And we knew that the first thing we needed to do was to tell her siblings. 
So we spoke to her siblings, to Wonder Girl and to Robo Boy, and in typical child fashion, they were incredibly accepting. It wasn't really a big deal. Robo Boy said, I kind of get that. I mean, girl clothes are better than boy clothes. Wonder Girl said, I've always wanted a sister, but I would have wanted it to be an older sister, so this is perfect, yay. So they both just kind of took it on board. I think Robo Boy was probably a little bit more weirded out at first because she was his brother. But even so, he took it in his stride and the siblings just accepted her for who she was and loved her for who she was, which was wonderful. So in the aftermath of this, how did I feel? I guess initially, I was concerned for her. Not concerned what she was telling me who she was, that's not a problem for me. I was concerned about how the world would receive that, about how complicated her life could potentially be as a result of this news. Everybody wants their child's path to be as easy and straightforward and happy and joyous as it possibly can be. And whenever there is something in that child's path that might potentially challenge that, we're going to feel concerned. It doesn't mean that I wasn't happy and embracing her transgender identity. It means that the reality is that to be a transgender person at this time is, is complicated. And the media was telling me how complicated it was. And the newspapers were full of articles about irresponsible parents medicating their children and how children couldn't possibly know that they're transgender at a young age and then the transgender movement was telling me that if I did anything other than jump straight onto the wagon of fully supporting her, embracing her pronouns and all of that then I was a bad parent and she was maybe going to do something harmful to herself. So I had all of this coming at me and my main concern was how do I best support my child to be who they are and live a happy life. So having had some time to let this news wash over us I spoke to Superkid about what was the first priority. What should we do first? How can we first support you to explore this? Because at that time it felt like exploration. Let's explore this. Let's see how trying on some gender identity stereotypes, I guess, in terms of clothing and whatnot might make you feel. So she expressed that she would like to try some female clothing and whenever I say female this or male that it's not that I think that women have to wear this and men have to wear that and women have to do this and men it's just that in the society we live in stuff is typically put into those categories so on this occasion we were looking to try some of the stuff from the girls section I guess of the clothes shop so we all went it ended up being all of us it was initially going to be just me and super kid going to the shops and choosing her some clothes but then she decided she'd quite like wonder girl to come with us because wonder girl is known for her style in this house she's a fashionista as she describes herself and i am definitely not so super kid felt that wonder girl might be able to help her select some clothing so we did that and once i'd got two children to manage i really wanted mr purple cut to come so robo boy came along as well and we all went on this incredibly awkward i'm not gonna lie this incredibly awkward shopping trip obviously super kid felt incredibly awkward taking that first step as much as she wanted it taking that first step and i was just trying to be jolly and this is all typical and normal isn't this normal this is so normal let's choose you some clothes uh, yeah, so it was kind of awkward and strange and it, it was awkward and strange taking the clothes into the changing rooms and trying to decide which changing room we should use, whether to use the men's or the women's and we ended up using the women's but at that time Super Kid's hair was really short and she was still presenting as a boy so that felt awkward for her and, but we got through the trip and we left with some bags full of clothing and the idea was initially that she would try these clothes on at home and see how they felt and we didn't know what would happen from there. And she tried them on and she was so happy. Oh my goodness, there was one particular top. It was a pink top with a unicorn on it. And it was like a Christmas top because this was in November. And she embraced that and she loved it and she wore it all the time. And then she broke up for the Christmas holidays and the other children hadn't broken up yet because her school has longer holidays than generally schools do. So she'd broken up about two weeks before the other kids and we were going into school for their various Christmas plays and Christmas activities and she was coming with me and initially she would change out of her girl clothes and come with me and after a few days of that she didn't want to, she didn't want to put those clothes on anymore, she didn't want to wear that clo those clothes anymore, that's not who she was. So she started coming out in like mix and match, like I'll just wear the t-shirt that I love with the unicorn on it and that'll be fine and, and I guess what, what was becoming abundantly clear to us was that her concerns about embarrassment about being seen in these clothes were less 
than how uncomfortable it felt to be in the other clothes. This was who she was and she didn't want to have to change out of that to leave the house. And that was when we realised that we were going to need to start telling the wider community, our immediate family and our close friends, and following that, the wider community. So yeah, so we uh, had to have some incredibly challenging conversations with immediate family, you know, grandparents, aunts, uncles, cousins. Luckily, we were very fortunate. On the whole, everyone was supportive. Some people within the family had a hard time understanding where the motivation from this was from. So we had a few comments like, you don't have to be a girl to wear a dress. Not really understanding that what Superkid was experiencing was gender dysphoria and therefore actually she did need to identify as a girl. It wasn't about the dress, but it was all well-meaning and and they were ready to be educated. And the fundamental and key part of this was that those family members love Superkid and were ready to support her whatever she needed to do. So that luckily we didn't have any not on my ha doorstep or not on my watch or I don't support this or we didn't have any of that thankfully we were very very lucky and then around Christmas time we made a Facebook post announcement in my uh, private Facebook page to basically everyone that's friends with me on Facebook so that we would just get it out there so that we wouldn't have to explain to every single person that we ran into over the coming months and that was received with so many supportive, positive comments. I live in a very accepting community. I guess I've created a very accepting community because of who I am and so this kind of extended to her. So she came out around Christmas time and at that time we also decided that the Christmas holidays would be a good time to try out her new pronouns and her new name. This is something that she really, really wanted. So it took us a while, I'm not going to lie, to completely change your child's name and pronouns is not something that just happens overnight, but I was happy to be corrected every time I got it wrong, so that helped a lot. And obviously we are now 19 months on from that initial coming out story, and so we just use that that is her name now, those are her pronouns now, we don't really think of her any differently other than our daughter, Superkid. Around six months after we started using the pronouns and the names, we actually legally changed her name and her pronouns using Deedpole and she does now have a passport in her correct name and pronouns because we do travel reasonably regularly because my mum lives abroad and I did not want to be at airports with my poor daughter having to explain the passport being in the wrong gender when she clearly now presents as a girl. So we just thought it would be more straightforward. I think at the time I had some kind of reservations about that because what about if she changes her mind? And then someone pointed out to me that if she changes her mind we could just change it back again. So I was like, uh, yeah, that's true actually. So we went ahead and did that. Um, and in terms of her medical treatment, I'm not going to get into that right now because this is our story of coming out and getting used to this idea and also that's quite deeply personal and I haven't run that by her yet. That might be something I talk about later. So now I'll move on to talking about the fact that Superkid is also autistic. Around the time that Superkid came out, some people questioned whether as an autistic child she would be able to make such a big decision about her gender, whether she might be confused, whether it might be because of her autism. Is her autism connected to this? Is this an issue? I guess. I guess certainly something that I was asked at that time. Certainly something that I don't think, but certainly something I was asked so I thought I would address it here. So there is some evidence to suggest a link between gender dysphoria and autism, and that autistic people may be more likely to experience gender dysphoria. But the research into this is in its very early days, and so more research is basically needed. So at the moment what we have is that a large percentage of the children who are referred to the British Gender Identity Clinic are autistic and a large number of children who are transgender are later diagnosed with autism. There seems to be a greater propensity towards gender dysphoria if you are autistic. However, I don't think that being autistic prevents my child from knowing her own identity. She knows her likes and her dislikes. 
She knows what she likes to eat. She knows what colour her eyes are. She knows what her favourite smell is. She knows what her favourite TV show is. She knows what she likes to do with her spare time. So she knows whether she feels like a girl or a boy. She knows that she feels like a girl. That's enough for me. So I will continue to support her because of her autism. I will continue to support her because of her gender dysphoria. And I will continue to support her because she is a really, really awesome kid. She's great. And the fact that she's trans and autistic are just some of the things about her that we know. So this is a starting point, I guess, for me talking about this. If this is something that you would like me to talk about in future videos, then I'm willing to do that. For example, I was considering making a video about how we handled her transition in school, because that might be useful for other parents who are going through similar things. There are lots of aspects of this as a parent that I could potentially talk about, but I'm mindful that I want to talk about what you guys want me to talk about. So if you would like to see more videos on this topic, do leave me a comment below asking me to do so and perhaps suggesting which areas of this topic you would like me to cover, bearing in mind that I will always have to clear things with Superkid. Superkid doesn't want to talk about this on camera herself, she doesn't really want to be an activist and she does certainly does not want to be a YouTuber, but she's happy for me to talk about it. Please consider hitting the like button if you've enjoyed this video. Leave me a comment below if you'd like to see future videos on the same topic. Please keep it respectful because I'll only delete it afterwards anyway if you don't. Thanks for being here and I'll see you next week. Bye bye.